Hello, welcome to the webinar about scripting with Enterprise Architect. I am here at Elegance um, and I will try to show you how to use uh, scripting in Enterprise Architect. Um, I'm using uh, Enterprise Architect version 12 and I'm using the example model that is shipped with uh, every installation uh, of every, every Enterprise Architect. Now, Enterprise Architect is a great tool. Uh, it has lots of functionality, but sometimes there are things that either are tedious or boring or difficult to do, and that you would would be so much faster if we just could just do something to automate some of the steps that we do in our day-to-day -day work with Enterprise Architect, and that is where the scripting uh, comes in. Um, so. The first thing we need to do if we want to do scripting is open up the scripting window. And that is opened up by going into view and then scripting. And that opens up the docked window somewhere in Enterprise Architect. And you see that there are all, there's already a, a package called local scripts. And those are the scripts that are located in your installation folder and that are shipped with the installation. So those are lots of example scripts that you can use. Next uh, thing to do when you're into scripting is to go into the MDG technologies and activate the EA script lib. That is also a library of scripts that are uh, that are in the MDG and also shipped with every installation and those are like more of the of the advanced examples of the advanced features and more like a like a library of functions that you can use later on so once we did that we can uh, start thinking about creating uh, our own scripts now scripts in enterprise architect are uh, grouped in type of packages script groups and first thing we need to do is to make a new script so there's lots of uh, types of uh, groups and we're going to make a normal group to start with so check normal group and we give it a name let's say normal group okay. so now that we have a group we can create a new script within that group so I'm going you can use uh, three scripting languages in Enterprise Architect VBScript, JScript or JavaScript. For this webinar I'm going to use VBScript for the simple reason that I'm more used to uh, VBScript than any of the other scripting languages. So we call it a uh, new, new VBScript. And we open it up, and we see that Enterprise Architect has already added a, a template code, so we can fill that in. And the first thing all of us need to do when writing some kind of program is to do a hello world. So type message box and then hello world. Like that. We save the script. So now we created our first script. Um, we can either uh, execute the script from here or from uh, here, or right, even by right clicking, we can uh, run the script. So if we run the script, you see that it opens up a message box saying hello world. That is uh, all nice and that works exactly like uh, like a VB script would outside of Enterprise Architect. But of course, we would like to do something with the elements and the model of Enterprise Architect. Yeah. Um, one of the most important uh, objects that you're going to use is the repository object. The repository object is uh, 
is the object that represents uh, the application and the model in in one object. So and Enterprise Architect made sure that the repository object is always available within the scripting environment. So we can add here something like repository dot and you notice that it immediately shows a list of all uh, operations and attributes of the repository object that we can use in a sort of intelligence uh, list. Yeah. So let's say that we want to show the connection string in the message box. We can type that like that. Save it and execute it. And voila. It says hello world and then the connection string. So you can even change that and say, let it say hello world from the model at. And so says hello world from the model at C users and blah blah example EAP. So that is uh, our first, first script and how to uh, execute it. Next we're going to have a look at the other types of groups that we can make. Because a type of group uh, it uh, it defines uh, a the template of a new script created within that group, but it also defines how you can execute uh, the script. Because the executing it from the scripting view or from the script itself is not the only option that we have. So let's uh, let's have a look at uh, you know and make a project browser group. And within that group, let's make a new VB script called Project Browser Script. Like that. So if we open that up, we see that there's a whole different template that is being used uh, for this uh, for this script. Um, and you see that. What it does is it, it uh, asks the repository which item is currently selected in the in the project browser, and based on that type, it will uh, do different things. Yeah. So let's uncomment the part uh, about the OT element. So Control Shift C, as you can see, here, will comment or uncomment. Uh, part of the script, so that is uh, useful uh, to know. Uh, it saves you time on uh, commenting or uncommenting. And then we can, so it uh, it creates a, a, a D element, and you will uh, get the selected object into that. Uh, variable. So now we can do something with uh, the element. So what I usually do is to make sure that I don't make a mistake I uh, I copy the name of the variable and then we can do something with it. Let's say message box that we want to show the name of the selected element the name of the selected element is and then we can add the element dot. And now you also see that there is an IntelliSense uh, option for this element. And the reason is is that we and people that know VBScript will say, okay, this is not correct. This shouldn't be done with uh, VBScript um, because we typed the variable. Now, in theory, in VBScript. Uh, variables are untyped, uh, so that that would be even a syntax error when executed in a normal environment. But because this is enterprise architect, it serves uh, for the editor to to show the the attributes and operations of that uh, variable. So it makes our life easier when uh, typing a script. So we can save that, and we can. Uh, if we select 
an element in the project browser. We can uh, select that and execute it. And it says the name of the selected element is class 1, and that is indeed correct. Yeah. If we now select something else, something that is not an element, and we execute the script, then it will tell us the script does not support items of this type, because we told it to tell it here. So that is all good, but what is even better is that we now also can right click on something in the project browser and suddenly there's a new context uh, menu item and we can execute the project browser script we created just now from the project browser itself. Which scripts are executed from uh, this project browser depends on the type of group. So every script that is in a project browser group will show up under the scripts if we right click on a project browser. Yeah. So if we move our new VB script to the project browser group and right click on it, then we should see that the new VB script is now also available for execution from the project browser. Yeah. Let's move it back. So the next group I would like to make is uh, a diagram group. And let's make a new VB script in the diagram group as well. Diagram script is better. And so if we open that up, we see that this has also another template. So it, it goes from the current diagram and it's checking when it gets a selection of all the selected objects in that diagram. Yeah. So from there, uh, we can make a, a variable thing selected. as EA dot and it will show us a list of what we can uh, use within the within the API and we choose a diagram object because these selected objects that's a collection of diagram objects and we want to loop that um, and then of course we want to get the element that is represented by the diagram object so we make another object or, or a variable called dim selected element as ea dot element okay so now we can loop this uh, collection of uh, selected diagram objects so we do for each object in Selected objects. And then we do a set selected element is repository dot get element element by ID and then do selected object dot element ID. So we ask the repository to get us the, ob the element object um, of the ID that is in the diagram object. So now we have an object, uh, the object that is selected and we can do something with it. Like say message box selected element name and name don't forget the ampersand will have an error so now we go, can go into a diagram and because we defined that script in a diagram group 
it will show up in our diagram in in the context of our diagram so we can now select multiple objects so we select these three objects and we do right click scripts and we can execute the script from the diagram itself and it will tell us that we selected class 4 which is correct class 3 and class 2 yeah. so now you can do something with the selection of the elements in a diagram you can be very nice let's have a look at uh, at the other groups that are available um, one of them is the workflow group uh, and those are scripts that I uh, executed uh, within the workflow engine so that would take us a little bit too far for an introduction uh, webinar to scripting so we'll, uh, we're going to skip that and then there's a there's a search uh, group uh, which is also very interesting but also a bit advanced for uh, for this webinar the scripts uh, the, the search scripts are used uh, within your uh, model search um, to look for uh, for certain things that might be too complicated to do with uh, just a normal SQL uh, search so that can be very interesting uh, for those of you interested in uh, search scripts there are a couple of examples uh, in the local scripts uh, that you can use like say Model search for attributes and it includes um, a script that creates the, the XML uh, that needs to be returned to uh, the model search so you have to construct the XML structure and then return it with the data and then return it so that uh, model search can display the results in the model search window um, another one that I do want to show you is the model search group. So this group yeah, scripts defined in this group will show up in the cont if we right click on the results of a search. So the first thing we need to do, if we don't have a, a really fancy template uh, for it, uh, but we can write it ourselves, is we define da dot element. We define a variable uh, for the selected element, and now we fill it with. Uh, the item or, or the object that is in the context let's say set selected element is repository not get context object and then we do something with the selected element message box name of the selected element in the search results selected element with name we save the script so if we go now into the model search and we search for an element and I know there's a an element called check availability somewhere in here so we ha now have that as an element we right click on it then we see our new model script and we can execute it and it says that it doesn't know the variable selected element so that is the reason why you should always copy paste variable names Okay. So we try again, go into the results, 
right click execute the script and it says the name of the selected element in the search result is check availability which is what we know and now it looks like we have seen all the different uh, scripting groups but there's another surprise let's make a new project browser group and we call it the context group I'll explain why we call it the context group later and we go into the group properties and you see here the, the group type is project browser but when we drop down there we see the all the groups that we saw earlier but we also see one for element package diagram and link those we haven't seen before so let's select the one element yeah, and click OK and make a new new PD script context script for element And we open that. that is completely empty. Let's copy the, the script that we made for the model search group. Let's copy it here. Do exactly the same. Just say in the context. And save that. Yeah. Now the special thing about the context is because we selected element that it will only show up in the uh, in the context menu if the selected element is actually an element yeah. so now because we selected a class and the class is an element we see the context script uh, for an element and we can execute it yeah. but if we right click on a package we don't see it yeah. But it not only in the project browser, it also works in the search results. Okay, our context script for an element. And also when we go into a diagram and we select an element on a diagram, then it also uh, has the the context script available for execution. Yeah. So that is that is a very very interesting uh, feature that is very useful because now it doesn't matter where as long as there's an element uh, selected that you can execute the script yeah? and you can do that for a link for a package or for a diagram as well. Um, okay. Now we've seen uh, in the scripts that this uh, there's things like the the ea.element and the repository object and we've seen that with the IntelliSense that we can uh, we can it helps us to write the correct uh, names for attributes and operations but of course you want to know uh, which operations and which attributes to use and to do so uh, you have to uh, consult the help file so all of the documentation of the API is in the help file. So where do you have to look? You have to look into automation and scripting, go into Enterprise Architect object model and then check the reference. And then there's a package for the repository which has a whole bunch of classes but the most important one is the repository class. And here it has the documentation of all the attributes and below it, all the operations that you can do, use um, on the repository object. Yeah. Same goes for element. Uh, here's the uh, element class, most important uh, object uh, or type of uh, type of thing in the model, and for all the other uh, uh, things. So that is uh, important to know where to find the information, uh, so that you're not guessing. Uh, as to which operation you should use, but you can actually uh, read the documentation and know that you're using the correct operation. Okay. Um, so now that you uh, 
Yeah, now that you've created all of your scripts, you of course want to make them a bit. You know, these these scripts that we created are within this uh, model, but you might want to make them available to uh, to to other models. Yeah. So uh, there's a feature in Enterprise Architect uh, with which you can export or import uh, scripts. So it's we go into Project Data Management and then check uh, or select Export Reference Data. And almost at the bottom, there's an option that you can use for automation scripts. Yeah. So you can export that. Yeah. And then select the file name. Yeah. So I've already done some uh, new webinar scripts. Yeah. Save that. And that will create an, an XML file. Uh, that you can import into uh, into another model, so that you can use those scripts in another model as well. Yeah. Um, now, in order to import, we go to Project Data Management and Import Reference Data. We select the file name. So, I've prepared. Uh, a sample before uh, of some scripts. We open it up, and then we select the automation script because that uh, file with reference data can contain more. But in this case, we're interested in importing the automation scripts, and we choose import. Okay, and as you see, it uh, adds the group of the webinar examples. Um, so, and the thing that I wanted to show to you is that, of course, now with this webinar, we only saw like uh, the the hello world type of uh, uh, of functionality, but you can do actually quite interesting uh, stuff with the scripts. So let's move this uh, line styles example I prepared earlier and move that to a diagram group so that we can call it uh, from diagram. So that is a script that I've created earlier, and yet again, it crashes. It's one that I use uh, quite quite often. So the the thing is, in Enterprise Architect, you can define one uh, default line style uh, for uh, relations between elements. can define one line style and you can also uh, define something for uh, for inheritance that it uh, it uses a tree mode but that that's about it and the only uh, options that you have for the default uh, line style uh, so go into line style uh, are one of the the three top uh, options so either direct auto routing or custom line but I I don't feel that like that is uh, that is enough for me. Um, one I I like the orthogonal uh, orthogonal styles, um, and I like to uh, make a difference between the different types of connector and use different styles for different types of connectors. Uh, um, so I like to use a direct style. Uh, I like to use a direct style for my dependencies. I like the orthogonal style for my uh, uh, for my inheritance. Uh, no, I like the tree style for the inheritance, and I like the orthogonal style for my associations. Um, so all of that I can define in this part uh, where I can say for each type of connector which of the types that I defined here I want to use. Yeah? So if I then on a diagram right click and I choose my line styles example script. Yeah? 
then it will change the styles uh, of my connector. So this has become the orthogonal line style. Yeah. My dependency has gotten a direct style and uh, inheritance and realizations have the tree style. Just to show you that you can also do pretty advanced uh, stuff with the scripts. Okay, thank you. That uh, wraps it uh, up for uh, this webinar. I think we uh, see lots of uh, interesting things. I thank you uh, for listening. And if you have any questions, you, go, you can go to my website, uh, bellicans.com, or send me an email at geert at bellicans.com. Thank you.